Okay, last lecture, then we're all done. You can all go. <laughs> so we're going to finish off with some snakes. I'm just going to run through. These are not all of the snakes in Myanmar. I'm not going to talk to you about hundreds of different types of snakes. I am just going to mention the snakes that we know are venomous and potentially dangerous or definitely dangerous. Number one on the list I think we can say is definitely dangerous. So this is your local Russell's Viper. It's widespread as you know throughout your country. It's not in every part of the country but many parts. Um, it has a complex venom that does a number of things including coagulopathy, attacking the kidneys, etc. The main clinical effects are local pain, swelling, bruising. It can cause necrosis, though probably most bites don't. It can cause shock. It can cause the coagulopathy and bleeding, which is classic for this snake. It can cause kidney injury, which is classic for this snake. It can cause capillary leak syndrome which is a particular feature of bites by this snake and as we've heard is particularly concerning. The specific treatment is the specific local MPF Viper antivenom and as you know eight vials is the standard initial dose. It is important to, to make sure that the patient is initially hydrated and I won't say more than that because we've already talked about the issues of giving fluid versus giving too much fluid. Um, it's a fairly distinctive looking snake um, it, it has large fangs, can inject a large amount of venom. This one you've probably never even heard of and we think it may just get into your country but we're not 100% sure. Um, but it's an interesting snake and I like snakes therefore I put it in. Um, it's, we, we know very little about it in terms of its bites but it's a fairly distinctive looking snake. However, Mandalay General Hospital is unlikely to get snake bites from this region. The next are the pit vipers. These are the green snakes or green pit vipers and they're not all green in colour I might add. And you can see there are lots of species. There is not one species of snake, there are a whole host of species. And they have different ranges and a number of those ranges overlap so there may be several species within the same part of your country. We think that at least some of them are widespread common and for many of them, but maybe not all, the venom attacks the haemostatic system so it causes a coagulopathy that might look similar to a Russell's Viper. At least some of the species can cause nasty local effects but most of them won't. Um, whether any of them can cause renal failure is uncertain, but we think maybe some of them can. I haven't got photographs of all of the species. Most of the photos are mine. Um, I've got a, a photo here from a colleague in the UK, Nita Malhotra. But there are several species that I had listed on the previous slide. I can find no good photographs anywhere of these snakes. And you can see that while some of them, many of them in fact, are green in colour, and unless you're a snake expert, they look very similar, not all of them are green. This one in particular can cause quite significant bites in parts of its range, certainly outside of your country, um, and it's not a green coloured snake at all. But they're all pit vipers as you can see in this uh, head photo of uh, Tremerosaurus erythrurus. You can see there the heat sensing pit. All of them have that feature. Russell's viper never has that. We're not quite certain what all of them cause, but this is my best guess based on current information. I'm not going to go through that in detail now. You've got the slide, so you've got that information. Um, but the important thing to note is this um, coagulopathy, and that many of them will cause at least some local effect. And a few of them, particularly Alba Labris, may cause uh, shock as well. Then there are the vipers that you almost certainly have not heard about and some of which can cause quite nasty envenoming. And we don't know how well distributed they are in your country and how many bites they're causing, but as you can see, for a Macrosquamatus, which can cause quite nasty bites, um, it's certainly found at least in the northern half of your country, according to all the data that we have. Calbachii, about which we know very little, similarly. Um, and Jodona, again, not a great deal of information, but down from China into this northern part of your country. 
And for macroscomatis, the one we know most about, the Chinese habu, as you can see, it can cause quite significant envenoming. Quite nasty local envenoming, it can be fatal. Severe swelling, necrosis, shock, coagulopathy, internal bleeds, and kidney failure has also been noted for this snake. <clears throat> so here they are, that's macroscomatis, calbacchii, and jadona, and they all have slightly different uh, the variations within each species in terms of coloration. But I think you can agree that this one, macrosquamatus, for someone who's not familiar, that could easily be mistaken for a Russell's viper. Mm. And it caused similar effects. But it will not respond to... It will not respond at all to the antivenom that's available. Here we have the mountain viper. Um, Avophis monticola, again, is very limited range as you can see in your country, just in mountainous areas mainly, though not entirely. We don't know how many bites this causes. We know that it can attack the hemostatic system, but there are very few records of bites by this snake in the literature from anywhere in its range, even though it's fairly widely distributed. But we think it can cause local swelling, coagulopathy, and has the potential to be a fatal, and there is no antivenom available. This is the infamous Malayan pit viper. Again, to someone not familiar, this could look like a Russell's viper. If you know about these snakes, you're not gonna mistake them, but to people who are not familiar, they might think that this is a Russell's viper. It has a wide range in Southeast Asia, and we think it just gets into this region of Myanmar. We don't know how common it is. Uh, we think it's probably not very common, but potentially it might cause the occasional bite. It causes very nasty local effects and coagulopathy. Moving on to the elapid snakes. Um, we have the crates, and you can see that there's more than one crate species. We're not talking about a single species of crate, but a range of crate species. There are at least six species of crates, and they don't all have identical venoms. Six species just that we expect to find in your country. They're nocturnal snakes, they're active at night, bites occur almost exclusively at night. Um, the, men the venom causes systemic effects, so as I said before, this is largely a paralytic venom, and it can cause presynaptic and postsynaptic paralysis. Many crate bites, though, also develop abdominal pain, and there is now a report for at least the species found um, in northern uh, Bangladesh, that it can cause myelitis and hyponatremia. We don't know if that's true for any of your species. Um, there hasn't been enough study done to determine that. But they never cause coagulopathy. And they don't cause major local swelling or necrosis. So if the patient has paralysis, but significant local tissue injury around the bite site, it's not likely to be a crate. There are no, um, MPF does not make a crate antivenom. So if you have a crate bite, the only antivenoms that you can use are either the Indian, and we're very uncertain whether they work, or far better, I'd be using the Thai Red Cross crate antivenom. And of course, that's not really available in your country, at least at the moment. The important thing, therefore, is to maintain respiratory function. If they're paralyzed, support their paralysis until that paralysis wears off. This is the range of some of these snakes. You can see that some of them are very limited range. Others are widely spread. Candidus, for instance, the common, one of the common crates, widely distributed in your country, um, as is um, Multisinctus, which is the Chinese crate. And here are photos of five of those six species. That's the Chinese crate with the narrow bands, the wider bands, a yellow tendency of fasciatus, Wider bands, generally white, but not always white, for candidus. Bungaroides, these spotted bands, usually. Um, and this one, very unusual, flaviceps. Very little evidence of nasty bites from this species. Then we have the cobras. There are at least two species in your country. The common cobra, uh, the common um, monocelate cobra, Naya coothia, and your um, Myanmar-specific species, Mandalayensis. 
We don't know a great deal about the venom or the effects of that one, but we do know a lot about Caothia because it's widely distributed beyond your country. We know that it can cause nasty local effects, including necrosis. It can cause paralysis. It's a non-spitting cobra, but we know a few populations outside of your country do actually spit. Um, it does not cause coagulopathy. It does not cause primary kidney failure. Um, it does not seem to cause myelitis. And you have a specific antivenom raised against uh, Nyakuthia, and that should be fairly effective. If you have someone um, with venom spit, which I think is quite unlikely, but if it should occur, they're not going to be envenomed systemically from spit, spit into the eye, unless there's a, a cut or something of that sort. But they can have permanent eye injury, even blindness. So it's very important to make sure you wash the eye very, very thoroughly. And then look for evidence of corneal damage. Do fluorescein staining. And if, if there is corneal damage, corneal ulceration, treat as you would any other cause of um, corneal ulceration with appropriate antibiotic cream, padding of the eye, etc. Um, so here are the, the species. This is Naya um, Kauthia, the monoslet, the one eye on the back. The Indian cobra has the spectacled, the two eyes. Kauthia has only the single eye on the back of the hood. Um, and very wide ranging within your country. Mandalayensis is much more um, uh, restricted, but as the name says, it should be around your area. So maybe some of the cobra bites you're seeing that may be a bit atypical are due to Mandalayensis. So it'd be quite important to document that if someone's bitten by a cobra and they bring the cobra in to have that identified. Julian, will the MPF cobra venom work against the Mendeleyensis? No one knows. No one knows. <laughs> Good answer. Um, next, we have the king cobra. Now, the king cobra is widely distributed, but it seems to be uncommon wherever it's found. This is the world's largest venomous snake. Has anyone here seen a live king cobra? None of you seen a king cobra? A king cobra, a big one, can be in excess of four meters long and it can stand with its hood up this high above the ground. This is a very formidable snake. However, it's a rare cause of bites. It's a, like the crates. Crates eat other snakes, especially venomous snakes. King cobras eat any other venomous snake, including smaller king cobras. Um, that's why they're not popular in captivity because although they're impressive to look at you've got to have a big supply of dangerous venomous snakes to feed them and that, that's not an easy thing to do but bites cause quite severe local pain swelling and can cause necrosis they can cause rapidly developing postsynaptic paralysis but they don't cause coagulopathy they don't cause primary kidney injury they don't cause myelitis the only antivenoms available close to you are the Thai Red Cross King Cobra Antivenom. And that's the one you should definitely use if you're faced with a major King Cobra bite. But because, if you can't get the antivenom, because it's postsynaptic, maybe you can assist a bit using an anticholinesterase to reduce the extent of paralysis. And here are some photos. This is a relatively small king cobra. This is in the uh, uh, Thai Red Cross um, Snake Park in uh, Bangkok. Um, they have a very typical patterning on the head of this dark margin around all the scales. It's a very distinctive feature of king cobras. You can see it in this photo, this one down here. They virtually all have that. Um, otherwise, they're a fairly nondescript looking snake, but they're widely distributed. And lastly, the non-front fanged colubrid snakes that I talked about this morning. You have several species of cat snakes of the genus Boiga. They have the potential to cause mild local effects, but maybe not much else. There is no antivenom that doesn't need to be. But this is the snake that you need to be concerned about. I suspect that this snake is a rare cause of bites in your country, but I doubt that it's a rare snake. It's the redneck keelback. Rhabdophis um, 
particularly Subminiatus, there's more than one species, but Subminiatus is the one we know is particularly nasty and has killed people because of bleeding. Um, so they can cause a nasty coagulopathy, just like a Russell's viper or a green snake, um, severe hemorrhage, and they also have caused kidney failure, like a Russell's viper. The only antivenom that's available is against a related species um, from Japan. It's only available in Japan. So it's not really available to you here. And so this is one of those rare cases where there is massive coagulopathy and you don't have an antivenom and you might need to use coagulation factors to support the patient who's bleeding to death. 